I did not eat anything this morning at all. Um, let me see if it's ready first. Okay, ma pshita lot boa. Madam no too. Mbad well sorti no? Okay. Okay, dark ma messi. Let me tell y'all how crazy this trip started off. So, right now I'm in Okai, which is in the south. Um, I'm here on a work trip and it has been so hectic. So tomorrow we have a workshop that we're doing. It's a micronutrient workshop. And um, yeah, we were supposed to actually, well, originally we were supposed to fly in today, um, but for some reason there was like this issue with our ticketing. And so we were like, oh my gosh, we have to fly in tomorrow morning, the first sunrise flight and literally come straight here. Oh, this is actually where we're staying is actually where we're having the workshop. So I'm like, okay, we're gonna have to come straight here and um, start immediately because I mean, the flights are 745, it doesn't take long to get here. We um, came here on a helicopter, so we went to Jeremy, then we came here, so it took a while. But um, I think it took maybe like in total an hour and a half or yeah, an hour and a half. But the thing is on the airplane, it wouldn't take that long. So anyways, that's what we're going to do, and we're going to go tomorrow morning. But thankfully, I checked my email this morning, and I saw last night our flight was confirmed. This was actually my first time um, going with them, you know, in general. But it happened to be a helicopter, so I was, like, so nervous because I don't really like helicopters. I've always been um, very nervous about getting on a helicopter. So, yeah. So, anyways... Let me get back to the story, y'all. So I see that there's a flight for today and that they confirmed our tickets and it was um, maybe like two hours earlier than um, what we originally planned for, like if we were to, to leave today. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, first of all, I did not pack anything because I thought we are going to leave tomorrow. And so I did not stay up last night to pack because I'm like, I'll just pack throughout the day. And then um, I had to actually pick up some of the, well, we have these guides that we um, give out to different service providers and stuff like that. And so we needed to go and pick up the guides in Delma. So I'm like, I do not know how I'm going to pack in time and then pick up, pick up this order from Delma and then make it to the airport in Taba. I was like, there's no way, but I'm gonna try. And so I'm like, Sam, I tell Sam what happened. I was like, please help me, whatever. So he helped me out. We get to Del Mar around nine, it was like 9.30, exactly 9.30. So we pick up the box. So they give it like this big box with all of the guides in it. And I didn't need to bring all of them. There was like 100, I needed like 50. So I was okay. I sat in the back seat and I'm stuffing my, um, my bag uh, both bags <laughs> with the guides um, just trying to make sure like I can bring as many as I can For some reason right by the airport after we pass the main airport which is the airport where all international flights come in and go out of and so once we pass the main airport the smaller airport is very close to it but it took like 20 minutes just to go from the main airport to the smaller airport like that it, that's literally a two minute ride or less normally there was so much traffic. I don't know what was going on. There were like all these big container trucks and stuff like that. And um, thankfully, the director was actually um, already there and he spoke to them and had them um, hold my spot. And I was able to get, uh, get there. Um, I got there actually like 10, 15. <laughs> The, flight, the flights of 1020 are like 1015 and they weren't ready to go yet, thankfully. Uh, so when I got there, I was like, um, I called and he was like, I'm negotiating for you to get on. And so they came to the front and they were like, um, you know, let's go. And they took my bag and they gave me like something, uh, like a boarding pass or whatever. And so, um, yeah it was so hectic this is what i'm about to eat so got some rice with some sauce poire, some fried plantain that we call bon and some chicken 
Okay, y'all, so the training already started. It's going well. We're taking a little break. So everyone left this space and they went over to like the restaurant area um, because they have some food for us. I'm about to go eat too because I didn't even eat breakfast, y'all, because I was setting up and stuff like that. So um, it is kind of hot because I thought it was going to be a closed space, but I have my fan, y'all, because I get hot so easily. So I'm like the whole time I'm like this because <laughs> i get so hot um but it's like an open space that's actually a basketball court right there the rooms and things like that are over there um but yeah we're doing it in this kind of space that isn't completely closed off so of course we can't have any um air conditioning they do have some fans well two fans in here um but yeah it's kind of like a i mean it's not all the way open it's just not closed completely so um but the outdoor space is so pretty at this hotel so beautiful lots of trees and flowers and greenery just so beautiful i'm about to go eat um right now and then i probably won't see y'all for the rest of the day all of this <sighs> y'all it's a lot going on and um we're gonna get really into it so i won't be able to check back in you know and i have to present um it's really short but i have to do a little short presentation and then yeah so let me go over there and see what they have to eat eight hours later the training is over and it looks crazy y'all let me show y'all around the hotel a little bit yeah we got some mangoes shall i said we like this my yard anyways <laughs> Look at the mangoes, y'all. And then through here like this, it's so pretty. Oh my gosh, y'all. They're building a um, pool here because it was a pool in the front and it was like too small, they said, or something like that. So they're building it over there. But we got coconut tree right here. We got another mango tree right here. I mean. Y'all, that mango is about to fall off. Like, can I just grab it? It's just one. What mango is that? I haven't been down here. You know, the other rooms are here. Next time, y'all, let me tell y'all, if you ever come to Okai, if you ever come to Okai and you are staying at La Couton, you have to request a room on this end. Okay, that's what they told me. They said that these rooms are newer. We got a room on the other end. So they're like the rooms that were built when the hotel was actually built, but these were built, um, you know, more recently and they are much nicer from what the guy told me. So yeah, cause I was asking him about the rooms. I was like, I see I'm making all these renovations around the area. You know, what about the, um, the rooms? Cause you know, it's a nice hotel, but I feel like the rooms need some work. And he was like, oh, that's because you're in one of the older rooms. They are renovating them. You know, um, these rooms over here, they're newer but yeah anyways i've never been to this end so let me see this is giving me lava pen vibes but i'm not 100 percent sure um i'll put a picture of what lava pen looks like i feel like in english that's like a chestnut or something maybe not i don't know i don't know the name in the, the name in english but um but the other one is lamb veritable and that is a breadfruit okay so um, either it's going to be a breadfruit or a, lamb, a lava pan. I should ask this guy what it is. <laughs> Bonsoir. I'm going to ask you a question. Is it a lava pan or a lamb veritable? Lamb. Okay, d'accord. Okay, so he said it is lamb. All right, so that's, that means breadfruit. Oh, this hotel is lit. Oh my gosh. Okay, y'all. What about this? What is this, honey? <laughs> is this a star fruit? What is this? What isn't this a star fruit? When you cut it in the middle, it's like a star. I think that's what it is. Y'all. I got a zero. I feel like I failed the test, y'all. Okay, this is a cherry tree. Do you see how they're not like the ones in the States? 
they they aren't like super round. Child, but I feel like the ones that stay might have some like GMO type of thing. This might be like the original cherry, y'all. But yeah, I feel like they they definitely look different. And they taste different. When you come to Haiti, you have to try some cherry juice. Um, but yeah, anyways, yeah. Oh my gosh, that's another thing. Plantain trees and um, banana trees look very similar too. So anyways, I think this is, these are plantain trees. So we're not going to stay too long on that before I get that one wrong too. <laughs> but um, let me walk back because I left my laptop over there. I left my bag. Okay, but there's someone from, oh yeah. Doctor is over there, so yeah, it's fine. But I love these. I feel like they're seats, aren't they? Because there's some um high, some taller ones at the entrance, and I feel like they're for you to sit on. I don't know. This hotel is cool. So we are heading to Porto Plants this morning, and we are actually driving which isn't something that I've done in a really long time since everything kind of started, but we aren't passing through Matisson. We're actually going um, through Cafu and then leading up to La Boudouze. So um, yeah, it's been a while, but I know everything's gonna go well and I'm gonna show y'all like what the road looks like.
so finally after driving for four hours we reached Kafu so instead of continuing straight into Matisse which you definitely want to avoid right now uh, instead of doing that we made a right and we basically drove deep into Kafu so at first you're gonna go through the urban area which has like a lot of homes a lot of twists and turns the road is very uh, narrow um, and then you're gonna go into the more rural part of Kafu which I didn't even know existed every time I would go to the south back in the day I thought Kafu was just the urban area I did not know there was the um, you know a rural area that connects you to Labul Duz I had no idea <laughs> Okay, so right here we stopped because the car in front of us had an issue um, going up the mountain and also there was something that they had to do to our car. I think they had to lock the wheels or something, but they, you do it from the outside. So someone um, hopped out the car and did something to the tires and then hopped back in once we got to the top got out the car, did something to the tires again, and then we were on our way. So as you can see, the road is unpaved for the most part. And um, when I took this road the very first time uh, back in 2019, I actually took it for work and they were working on the road. And so I thought by the time this whole Mati something started and everyone started taking this road, I'm like, okay, it must be paved by now because when I went back in 2019, they were working on the road. And so that uh, was not the case at all. It is still unpaved. Unfortunately, a lot of these projects that the government starts, they do not finish or the money is gone, you know, before they even get halfway. So the road was unpaved and at times very scary. So we are definitely in a car that is made for this road. So the car that's in front of us is identical to the one that we're in. So we didn't really have any issues on the road, um, but there are definitely a few cars that you will see stopped on the side because they broke down, you know, um, the road is very difficult. So you can only imagine. So even cars that you think wouldn't have much issue uh, did kind of struggle like the one uh, that's kind of stopped here. They struggled along the entire road like they had issues going up a few places. They had to keep stopping. Um, so, yeah, so some cars that you think are definitely made for the road uh, have some issues as well. So as you can see, there isn't a lot of space to drive because like one little movement and you are rolling down the mountain. And that's what I noticed when I took this road for the first time back in 2019 and they were working on the road. I'm thinking they're going to widen it. That's what they do um, in a lot of the mountainous roads like Mon Pilboro, where I was born. They um, cut into the mountain. They filled up part of it so that the road is much wider than what it was, you know, back in the day. And so when I saw them working on it, I'm thinking they're going to do the same thing. But um, well, they said they did it a few places, but for the most part, it is very narrow. 
So if you are coming to Haiti and you rent a car or you, you know, you've driven in Haiti before and you need to get to the south and they tell you, let's go on this road. Um, I am not going to advise that you drive because you have to be a very skilled driver and used to this type of road. Um, even if you say you've been driving since you were 16 in New York City, <laughs> it's still very difficult to drive on this type of road. So I would not recommend you just, you know, get in your rental car or whatever and someone tell you, let's go and you and you start driving. Um, I would not recommend that. So now we are entering La Boule Douze and the rest of the road is paved. So basically from La Boule, you can go to Thomasin, um, Kinskov, Jacques, or you can go in the opposite direction uh, and go down to Pétionville. From Pétionville, you can get to everywhere else like Delma, Taba, Fré, um, Vivi Michel, um, you know, La Ville or anywhere else. So basically... Um, we're here we made it thank goodness <laughs> 